The study of mathematics, astronomy and metallurgy was well established in ancient India and two Indian men and two women of Indian descent have already travelled into space. South Africa has its own space agency and when Kriya attended an open day recently, corporate communications manager Vineshri Maharaj brought her up to speed. There is evidence that even in ancient times, India was actively involved in the study of mathematics and the natural sciences. This knowledge ranged from architecture and engineering to weapons and metallurgy. And it has continued into the nuclear age. Kalpana Chawla was India's first female astronaut. Indians in science date back to before the 1950s and globally science and technology has been identified as a key economic growth factor. Today I'm out at the Gateway to Science exhibition to find out exactly what we're getting up to. Established in 2010, SANSA is involved in a number of activities, including Earth observation and space operations. Vineshri Maraj took the opportunity to put space science in the public eye. Vineshri, tell me why is it so special that NASA has decided to bring this exhibition to South Africa? This is a mobile exhibition that actually travels around the world. It is run through the NASA Visitor Center. And they're all about outreach and getting people excited and interested in space and the investment. When we walk through it, we're going to have a look at some of the really exciting artifacts and models of the real life stuff that's in space. So as an example, we have the lunar rover. There are three of them currently sitting on the surface of the moon. These were part of the Apollo missions. And so they've brought back samples of the moon rock, which is part of this exhibition. South Africa is involved in quite a number of missions that are currently happening. What are we involved in? South Africa has a space agency and we have a ground station in Hachibius Hook in the Northwest province. And they recently provided support to the launch of the LADI mission for NASA, which is actually exploring the atmosphere and the dust around the, the moon. So shall we get moving? Absolutely. Great. <laughs> Let me guess. This is the Sputnik. That's right. And this actually triggered the entire space race. Vineshri, this is the lunar rock. That's right. There were six Apollo missions that brought back samples of the, the moon rock. It's very exciting. I feel like I've been to the moon today. <laughs> For people watching this right now that want to get into the space and technology field, how would I go about doing that? If you want to work as an astronaut or an engineer or a technician, you obviously have to take up science and maths at school. Uh, there are programs now in a lot of the universities that focus on astrophysics and, and, and other space related engineering courses. I'm going to go try and land a spacecraft on the moon. <laughs> Thank you so much for chatting to me today, Vinishri. Great stuff. Cool. Lovely. Thank Bye. you for the opportunity. Before trying out her piloting skills, Kriya took some time to explore a life-sized replica of a space station module. As part of my astronaut training that I've just made up today, I have to learn how to land a shuttle. So, let's give it a go. Long-range tracking camera. I'm really not very good at this. 70, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200. Okay, right? I think I crashed. Unfazed by her bumpy landing, Kriya orbited Russia's Mir space station before rendezvousing with Sansa's executive director. Amal, South Africa has quite an advanced space program. The space program is divided into the satellite engineering area, the space observation area, the space science area, and the space operation area. Those essentially are the four components in which we are investing money in space development. Tell me a bit more about satellite development. South Africa started the first satellite program many years ago, actually 19, 1980. Uh, but the first satellite that was launched was actually a university project at the University of Stellenbosch. Consequent to that, uh, we embarked on another satellite program which is funded by the Department of Science and Technology. Suvendile was launched in 2009 and these efforts were are there to maintain momentum and sustainability in the, uh, in the area of satellite development. What information are we looking for? If we look widely at the development of Earth observation, those images can be used to determine fires, floods, human settlement. We even use those images to understand the movement of people in and around particular areas in terms of urbanization. Well, Amel, thank you so much for chatting to me. I think I'm going to go try out the space camp. 
Okay, so growing up I've always wanted to be an astronaut and I feel like I can test my skills. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Yes. Korea? Yes. Um, okay, they can give you a helmet. Space camp. Okay, got medium and large, which one would you do? Uh, go for a medium. Okay. I don't think my head's that big. Ha ha, ha ha. So it's you've a... got rolling. Oh yeah. wow. <laughs> and then you have pitch. Ah! <laughs> you see? What am I going to be doing? Your ship is running out of fuel and you're in space. Uh, you have a fuel cell that side. Okay. And I need you to take it up to this patch here. Okay. Oh, this is very complicated. There you go. So it's not as easy as it looks, people. <laughs> one by one, preferably. Okay, put it here by oxygen. Same thing. So this is one of the things I've been looking forward to the whole day. Tell me a little bit more about the multi-axis training. This was mainly used to test the astronauts. Okay, so this is do or die. If I do not get this right, astronaut dreams out the window. Okay, I'm ready. It. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I can still be an astronaut. My day at the Gateway to Science Expo really has been a lot of fun and I feel like I've gotten closer to living my dream as an astronaut. So from me, all I have to say is to infinity and beyond.